Me, 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 it's all about me, me, me. Zigga mama, zigga mama, zig. Jack! Jack, oh. run! Oh, oh, we're on. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Okay, here we go. Welcome to the Aurora Film Association. I'll pass for that. Cut, cut, cut. Alright. Take 237. And action. Wow, 237. Wow, that's a lot. Okay. Cut! Welcome to the War Wait, Film Academy's first and no, no, no. Shut up! This is it. This is all I have to read. I just saw two guys walk out of here and get fired. All right, here I go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual Film Academy Film Festival.
So, Steve, you going to the game tonight? Should be a good one. Nah, I have some community service hours to get get done. I have to volunteer some old person's home. Dude, that sucks. This is the last week. You gotta get those done. But I mean, if I wasn't working tomorrow, I could have worked at the YMCA's dance party. But I said I gotta work at the stupid nursing home. What do they even want you to do there? It says on this flyer that all I have to do is just work in the kitchen. Can't be that hard. Whatever. Yo, are we still going to the movies this weekend? Of course. I have to do at least one fun thing this weekend. But dude, I gotta go. I'm already five minutes late. Alright, see you. See ya. I'm here to volunteer. Oh, I'm sorry, we just uh, filled up all the volunteer jobs. Yes! Oh wait, if you're trying to get hours for school, I can sign your paper if you entertain some elderly folks. Well, I can't sing or anything. No, it's fine. All you have to do is talk. You know, they have some great stories. <sighs> yeah, that's fine. Alright, I'll take you right over. Mr. Wiseman, this is Steve. He's gonna keep you busy for a while, entertain you a little. He doesn't look like much of a singer, Stacy. No, he says he can't sing. Well, he isn't much of an entertainer, then. Bill Wiseman, but you can call me Bill. So the nurse says he has some good stories. Well, I wouldn't say they're the best, but I do have plenty of stories from when I was in World War II. Can I hear one? Of course. It all began when me and my partner, and then we ran back to that boat, and my sergeant said, Get down! Bullets were whizzing over our heads. My partner and me got down and one man died. He told us, boys, oh, wow. it's time to fight. 11 o'clock already. Sir, I gotta get going. My mom's gonna wonder where I'm at. It was a pleasure to entertain you. Mr. Wiseman, do you think you would uh, like to go to a movie tomorrow at 7? Of course, of course. I can't remember the last time I've got out of this place. Alright, I'll pick you up at 7. That was the last time I ever saw Mr. Wiseman. I went in the next day to take him to the movie I promised him, but I was told he died just a few hours after I left. In the little time I got to know Mr. Wiseman, I was intrigued and touched by his stories. Although I didn't know him for long, I felt like I knew him for a lifetime. I continued to volunteer at the nursing home well after his passing, and I'll forever continue to tell the stories of my encounter with Mr. Wiseman and the hours I spent with him. Is it? Kevin, where's the phone? Hello? Fine, I'm taking the car. Kevin, I'm leaving. DC. Is your mom home? Uh, yeah, she's right in the kitchen. Where is your phone? I need to use it right now. Oh, Lisa, what's wrong? Come sit on the couch. Forgot that Ben called me last night and, and needs a ride home from the airport. I have to get a hold of him. I was supposed to pick him up at 2.30. Ben has stupid new phones. I can't even remember the number. And Kevin took the car to golf and didn't even tell me. Lisa, it will be fine. Everything will be fine. Trust me. Ben is a grown man. I'm sure he'll be able to figure something out. Can I take your car to go pick him up? Lisa, you can't. Why? I'll pay for gas if that's what you want. I can't leave him all alone, Joyce. He's been waiting there for two hours. Lisa, everything will be fine. I'll go pick him up. Okay, but I'm coming with you. Lisa, you can't. Please stay here. Why? Joyce, I'm 66 years old. I can go for a car ride if I want to. Just stay here with Jennifer. Jennifer, make sure you watch her. All right.
Alzheimer's is the worst that it has ever been. We keep having these cycles and she forgets about her husband's death. Even today she kept ranting about how she needed to pick her son up from the airport. Joyce, all that you have done for Lisa these past six years is true friendship. You can't do it all by yourself anymore. Her kids need to know. I know this is going to be hard, but this is what's best for her. She's not going to be a few yards away anymore. It's not the end of the world. She's just going to have to go and live with one of her other kids now. Thank you, and I will try to help her kids out as much as I can. Joyce. You're doing the right thing. Ben, it's about your mother. Talk to me. I love Talk me alive. Talk like trees and beautiful sky. Does she? Hey Alec, 
I'm home. Oh, not again. SpaghettiOs. Embrace your inner child. What a marvelous age we live in. The 1920s, also known as the Roaring Twenties, was a time period defined by prosperity and cultural change, especially in the area of entertainment. Due to the end of World War I, an economic boom occurred that allowed for the common man to invest in the social aspects of life that were once affordable only by the elite. That shows singles in the center field. Bringing in Gomez and Corsetti with two Yankee runs and putting the Yanks ahead. Theaters and film, although present before, gained immense foothold in this new American lifestyle and became a popular pastime. Thus, the golden ages of Hollywood and the ever progressing cinema industry began, even in the smallest of places. East Aurora, early 1900s, Main Street. Towards the center of the main street is a prized jewel of the artistic town, the Millard Fillmore Theater, the soon-to-be location of the Aurora Theater. The Millard Fillmore Theater offered an array of entertainment for the small town. Thrilling movies of the silent era and vaudeville acts, including anything from musicians to magicians or to acrobats, were all available to the public for a low price of only 10 cents. As the 1920s approached, the desire for such entertainment increased, and thus the idea to renovate the somewhat mediocre Millard Fillmore Theater into a new theater came about. The Aurora Theater was built in 1925 on the site of the former Millard Fillmore Theater, and it was a group of local businessmen including Irving Price, who later formed Fisher Price, and also Albert Hubbard II, the son of the founder of the American Arts and Crafts Movement and the Raycroft. And they, in addition to several other businessmen, built the theater, ground up, and it was built as a movie house, and they actually ran the theater up until the early 1950s when they then sold it to a theater management group called the Black Brothers. In 1925, the East Aurora Theater was complete. At the time of its opening, it awarded itself for being a cutting-edge provider of entertainment for the public. Safety was of main importance during the construction, and therefore, the theater was equipped with a fireproof lobby, emergency sprinkler system, and more exits than the law mandated. In addition, the theater had 724 plush seats, the latest and best projection machines, heating and air ventilation, state-of-the-art dressing rooms for performers, and a 450 key organ that had on it bells, chimes, taps, and drums to create the presence of an orchestra during presentations. What you will find in the Aurora Theater that is original to its 1925 format is the murals on the wall that are currently in the revised lobby. Those were actually painted by Margaret Evans Price. She was married to Irving Price and they were actually in the original auditorium. Also, that's original is the projection booth. The room um, has not changed its formation whatsoever. The equipment may have changed over the years, but that's all intact as it has been. And then also, um, now in behind the stage and to each side, there um, were the former dressing rooms. And although we're not used as dressing rooms any longer, that's where they put heating units. Um, those were original to the theater also. June 2nd of 1925, the opening night of the Aurora Theater. The first film shown was Madame Sans Je, featuring Gloria Swanson, one of the most prominent stars of the silent era, both as an actress and a fashion icon.
Directed by Leon Spre, a French producer known for his avant-garde and unorthodox directing methods, Madame saint Je was a silent romantic drama about the overthrowing of King Louis XVI during the French Revolution. Today, the film, like many others of that era, is known as a lost film due to the belief that no copies are in existence. Unlike the movie theaters of today, which use essentially the same type of system as our home DVD player, in the 1920s, movies were created on a film strip. Each scene was broken up into individual pictures, and each picture was then placed on a fragment of film strip, which when all put together and spun on the reel quickly, created movement, and thus a flowing movie. Since that time, the projector and engineering of film has never ceased. The Aurora Theatre was able to maintain the historic art of real film projecting until this past year, 2013, when it became mandatory that all theatres convert to digital since the production of film reel was coming to a close. I like digital mainly because it makes my job a lot easier. Even though it does lose like the artistic value of it. But all it is is just like hitting play, it's like a DVD player. <laughs> it just does everything by itself. That's what I like about it, this is really nice and easy. And the thought of it, too, is that instead of like the frames going, what is it, like 24 per second? Instead of that, it's a series of JPEGs that just like sh go right after another. And I'm like, who, who doesn't? do that on a computer when you're like clicking through your photos and you just go really really fast and that, that's that's pretty much what the movie then is so yeah that's one probably the biggest reason why we're like digital today it remains the goal of the owners and workers of the aurora theater to maintain its history and unique background Renovations are being made constantly to bring back as much of the original atmosphere from 1925 as possible. For the future of the Aurora Theater, aside from bringing first-run films and films that people want to see right away to something in quality that we're trying to improve in, uh, we're looking to try to make the Aurora Theater not just a movie theater, but a community event center. And we've been working with local businesses and organizations to use the theater for different types of events. The Aurora is not just your average theater, but it's a piece of this town and the history that makes it so unique.
When I was younger, I always thought I could be someone if I tried enough. When I was younger, my father said, wear a smile, show respect. When I was younger, you never said. When I was older, I feel helpless. When I was younger, you shone the light. And now that I'm older, it doesn't shine bright. When I was younger, you always said that as I got older, you'd always be there. When I was younger, I never thought that when I was older, I'd see you give up. Now that I'm older, I'll carry the torch. Just promise you'll stand, you'll be strong. When I was younger, I only dreamed that when I got older, you'd be proud of me. Living day by day with no music is pure torture to the soul. Without music, the words slip from harmony in manuscript read between the lines. You need music to survive, to keep your heart alive, to keep it pumping and up to date. smiles, hurts, and cries, it sings down memory lane and lullabies, it brings a mixture of emotions, it cleanses, releases, inspires, composes, writes, and admires, and appreciates the different kinds of music. The world without music is a world without your soul. Remember when you wanted something? Something gorgeous, not tangible, but in your thoughts. It could have all of the space in your brain if it had to, even if no one else agreed it was there, or even real. Remember that day you found it? And soon as you beheld the shriveled something, you said, this will change me, won't it? When you told the people this, they stopped listening. Oh, they had known you were crazy, had they not, they said. Remember when it was not empty, the plastic bag? A tape, it said, Thea's Mix, Happy Birthday Daddy, 2001. Later you would try to play it in that tape player you stole from the thrift shop drop-off. After all, you gave them sweaters to sell, did you not? The tape did not play. This was something magnificent, at least more magnificent than any other tape player. The canvas bodysuit had hand-painted puce-colored shrubbery on it. This was what you needed to blend into your shrubs. This was what you had been waiting for. Remember how you donned the bodysuit and you crouched in my shrub? and you threw bullets at me, and you put earphones in your mixtape from Thea, and pretended to sing to the songs that were not there. I wished I were you. Wished more than I wished I were any human. You had something. 
more something, at least than anyone else, to live for. Whose woods are these, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not mind me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy thick. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. I'm Quinn Aiken. I am the writer of Bonded. It is a story of a young man who, after his father's passing, uh, learns a lot about his family's secrets. Um, but in the process, he learns more about himself as well. Salon for tonight? Absolutely, buddy. Looking forward to it. Okay, we're starting at 5 30. Don't be late. Am I ever late? No. Well, then don't worry. I'll be on time for Bond. James Bond. You make a great Bond, you know that? It's amazing the resemblance between you and Daniel Craig. You should probably take his place in the next movie. You know, I'd like you to uh, teach me to be as funny as you are at some point, but it's 7.30 and I'm late for work. I gotta go, it's an important day, so see you, kid. Alright. Have a good day at work. Don't hurt yourself. Bye. Pretty good, how are you? Doing alright, I guess. Rough week? Still a little bit. I fall over and die right about now. Okay, let's not be over dramatic. I think you're fine. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know why? Because it's Friday. Because it's Friday. You know you guys are excited too. So hey, we should do something crazy tonight. 
if crazy is having a James Bond marathon with my dad, then you got it. No, I mean like, climb some buildings, do some graffiti. Yeah, I don't think so. You guys come over if you want though. What time are you guys starting at? Around 5.30. Exactly 5.30? Okay, what's that supposed to be? Come on, you guys are always exactly on time. It's like a weird superpower or something. Yes, we are normally on time. But if you can't make it at 5.30, don't worry about it. Come on, everyone. All right. I gotta get home. See you later. Yeah. So where's your dad? I thought you guys started already. I don't know, he's supposed to be home like half an hour ago, but he's not back yet. Really? Your dad's never late. Yeah, I'm a little nervous actually. Did you call him? Yeah, I called him like three or four times, but he didn't pick up. That's really weird. Yeah. That might be him right now, go answer that. I should probably check it. Yeah, I don't know who this is. Answer it. Probably should. Huh? Hello, is this Turan Delacroix? Can I ask you speak? I'm Officer Johnson from the police department. Your father, Andrew Delacroix, has been in an accident. Please come down to the Mercy Hospital as soon as possible. I don't get it. It just doesn't seem fair. I don't know. Your dad was one of the nicest and kindest guys I've ever known. I can't imagine who would have done this. People always say that everything happens for a reason. But I can't think of any reason that anyone would have done this. My dad put everybody before himself. He was always meticulous with everything he did. Always so careful. After my mom died, he gave me everything, and the world took everything away from him. He doesn't deserve this. Hey, man. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. My home and estate to my son, Turn. He also wrote at the bottom to give you this key. He stated that this key is bigger than anything that I could tell you. Is that it? Yes, that seems to be all. Once again, I'm, I'm deeply sorry for your loss. You're a very strong young man. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. What? Why? Doesn't matter. Just go. I'll tell you on the way there. All right. So where are we going? We're going to the bank. My dad left me a key for a safety deposit box. Alright. The only thing we need to figure out is what number box it is. I think it's his birthday, March 12th. Reach 
What are you waiting for? What if I don't want to know what's inside? Your dad gave you that key for a reason. It means something, right? It's got it. What is it? Just a note. So what is it? Uh, it's a puzzle that my dad and I used to do when I was little. And it's cryptex. So each number in the sequence gets more and more specific as you go down. So do you think you know what it means? Yeah, I think so. Are we being followed? Why would we be followed? Well, maybe it has something to do with the note. What kind of note is this? I don't know, let's just get home. All right, I'll try to lose them. Okay, second door. Whatever, just find it. I'll keep looking. Second door. Third box. Third box. Seventh. Can you find it? Got it. What is it? It's a Ben Franklin book. Turn. They're here. Okay, I knew they'd find us. Let's get positioned downstairs. Hiding here. So what are we gonna do? Mr. Delacroix, open up. We know you're in there. This will be a lot easier if you come out. Mr. Delacroix, if you do not come out of this door, we will have to do so forcefully. Mr. Delacroix, open up. Give us whatever was in that box and we can all walk away. It's a lime. This kid. Coffee shop, cut him off. Got him. Turn one. Thank you.
Hello, son. If you are watching this, you already know something terrible has happened. And I want you to know that I love you. And you will come to realize that I wasn't the person you thought I was. The truth is complicated, but you need to know now that I am gone. And there are compromised members in our government who will present an imminent threat to our nation if they obtain this information. All of my work will go to waste. It's imperative that you keep this information out of the wrong hands. I know you're up to the task, and your drive will take you a long way if you allow it to. You'll find the rest of the information on the file. I love you, son, and I'm counting on you. Uh, my name is Hannah Braun. I'm the writer of the film The Color of Life. It's about a family and their relationships with each other over the course of a few months, and the underlying theme of the film is um, enjoying the moment you're in and not worrying too much and trying not to miss all the little aspects of life that make it so exciting and just going with the flow and seeing where life takes you because you can't change what is happening. You're all probably wondering why I'm wearing yellow. Earth to Caroline! I said pass the eggs! Sorry. Here. Are you alright, Caroline? Yeah, I'm... I'm just tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I've been really worried about Grandpa. His cough is getting a lot worse. Honey, stop worrying about Grandpa. He's old. His lungs just aren't as strong as they used to be, that's all. Who's old now? You know what I told you, Michael. Call me all kinds of things, just don't call me old. I'm a spring turkey. <laughs> I think you mean spring chicken, Dad. Nah, same thing. Good morning, Grandpa. Did you sleep well last night? Question is, did you sleep well last night? I heard you rumbling about in your room all night. I was just finishing up some homework that's due today. Always doing homework, my little genius. It's a lovely scarf. You know, uh, yellow's my favorite color. You know why? Grandpa, you say that every time I wear this. You love yellow because it reminds you of something. Right you are. Like my good pal John once said, tomorrow may rain, so I'll follow the sun. <laughs> well guys, I hate to interrupt the conversation, but you guys gotta get to school. Alright. Bye, Dad. Bye, Mom. Catch you on the flip side, Grandpa. Hang tight, homeboy. <laughs> Bye. Get to the 
right, guys. We just have to stop at the doctor's before we get home. Why? What's wrong? Is Grandpa okay? Calm down there, little lady. I'm not dying yet. That's not funny, Grandpa. Jeez, Caroline, lighten up. Hey, guys. Let's not fight. Dad, you really should not joke about that stuff. Sorry, Mom. Caroline, let me tell you a few things that I have learned in my many years on this earth. Life is like a popsicle. If you spend too much time worrying about it melting, you might miss the flavor. Grandpa, that makes no sense, but you really do need to calm down. Everything's been so much more fun since he came to live with us. What can I say? The life of the party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Life of the Party, we're here. Call me when you want to get picked up. Aye, aye, Captain. Are you alright? You don't really seem like yourself lately. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just... I'm really worried about Grandpa. Dad's right. He's getting old and... Well, I don't want to lose him. He's one of my best friends. Caroline, you don't need to worry. You see how much life he has in him. Why don't you try having the same? Yeah, embrace your inner old man. <laughs> precious peach cobbler recipe. <laughs> <laughs> well, how would you like it if you lent someone a recipe and then they won $10,000 with it? Honey, you gotta let that go. Claire, how's your day today? <laughs> it was awesome. I beat up a kid and made him give me his lunch money. <laughs> really? No. We had a math test and, uh, fish sticks for lunch? Hmm. Grandpa, class ranks came up today and I made the top ten. I had a girl. Mm -hmm. My little genius always getting good grades. <laughs> oh. Dad, how'd your doctor's appointment go today? Oh, well, uh, I have cancer. What? Well, no, don't go worrying and anything like that. I've had, it. I've had it for a while now. The doctor said I've been doing just fine with it. So I don't want you treating me any differently or acting like I'm sick or anything. I'm fine. I'm healthy. Spend the whole day, it's all free and it's all in your hand. It's a beautiful view and it's waiting for you to come see that it's all in your hand. A place to rest a while, a place to find your smile when your life is too strange and you long for the change guaranteed that it's all in your head it's a sweet getaway you can spend the whole day it's all free and it's all in your head it's a beautiful view and it's waiting for you to come see that it's all in again today, Grandpa. Really? How was it, kiddo? The same. Do you remember that time we, uh, we were at Knox and the birds started chasing you and you were running around screaming, Stop! It's gonna eat me! That was really scary! I was six. <coughs> hey, Grandpa. What is it, kiddo? Thanks. For what? Just... everything. When you move 
moved in with us after Grandma died. We were broken. Mom didn't want to get up in the morning, Dad didn't want to go to work, and Claire just didn't understand. But when you got here, that all changed. You taught us it was okay to have fun every once in a while and not to take things so seriously. You brought life back into our house. So thank you. You got it all wrong, kiddo. It was you who did those things. See, you are the strongest 17-year-old I know. Do you remember what you told me? You said, Grandpa, when it is time, I will take care of the family. And how many 17-year-olds do you know that would do something like that? <coughs> I have something for you and Claire. You have to promise me that you won't open it until I'm gone. You're all probably wondering why I'm wearing yellow. First time I wore this dress, Grandpa told me it looked like sunshine. And he loves sunshine. He wouldn't want me to be sad today. I... I worry too much, and he would always tell me, Take it easy, kiddo. Life is a popsicle. If you worry too much about it melting, you miss the flavor. He's right. He wrote me a letter and told me not to read it until he was gone. I read it this morning. You know what it said? Nothing. He drew a picture of a yellow popsicle with a crayon. I guess what I'm trying to say is we shouldn't be sad today. Grandpa had so much life and just because he's gone, doesn't mean his life is gone. So thanks for everything, Grandpa. Fly high.
I'm Kayla Cunningham, and my movie is Have a Great Summer. It's basically about a kid named Zach Stevens. It's his last year in high school, and he wants to tell the girl of his dreams how he feels, and basically the whole movie is uh, coming up to the point where he finally tells her and wants to make it really big and memorable, and it's about his conflict with himself and uh, falling in love with this girl. I'm Zach Stevens, and I've been in love with Amanda Miller since the sixth grade. Senior year's wrapping up with only about three days left, and I still have yet to tell Amanda how I feel. I feel like I've waited so long to tell her that when I finally do, it has to be pretty meaningful. It's a huge deal what I'm doing here. I mean, I'm basically professing my love to a girl that has everything going for her in every single way. She's just the coolest, you know? There isn't a day that goes by I don't think about her, and I'm being totally honest. I'm not going to let this slide by another year. I'm telling Amanda how I feel, and I know just how to do it. You have to sign it. Yeah, I'll make it good. Well, I have to go put up more posters, so I'll talk to you later. All right, here's your stapler. Wait. Oh, All right. thanks. See you. Bye. All right, see you, Amanda. What do you mean you guess so? This is Amanda Miller we're talking about. Your sweet Juliet. Yeah, I know, but I mean, like, I feel like it's such a big deal. I feel like I'm proposing or something, you know? Think. Zach, Zach, you're making this too hard on yourself. Just embrace your inner Dwayne The Rock Johnson and, and make the ladies melt. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll get on that. All right, better get back to class. I think we're gonna be late. Uh, yeah, I think we're like running on like, like 10 minutes. We should probably go. Repeat after me. Ustedes están tardes. Late for class. 
Hey, Zach, baby. What's going on? Uh, so, what are you gonna do to impress Amanda? Uh, well, I mean, you could you could uh, change your hair, change your clothes. Hey, you could even shave. It's mustache time. What if I drool in her yearbook? She will forever remember me as Saliva Boy. What if she gave me the wrong one? What if my pen explodes in it? Her memories will be ruined. God, this really shouldn't be hard, right? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? She could not feel the same way. And that's the worst. I've been waiting so long for this. I can't afford to mess this up. Zach, Zach. Now's your chance, man. Go do it. I have the tiger. Hey Zach. Hey man, how's it going? Um, good. Do you mind you? Yeah, here's mine. Cool. Alright, that's it. So, uh, so what are you gonna write? Oh man, dude, I got this. I didn't know what I'm doing. Oh, Alright, go for it. Oh, wait. What? I don't know, just... Hey Amanda, you're super hot. Oh. God, you're hot. Like, these, don't, these aren't meaningful. I, mean, if I, might, I feel like I'm just... Yeah, dude, just, just, you know, speak from the heart. These guys are just being shallow jerks. Just, you know, do what you were going to do. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to forget it. Wilcox. This is first name. Wilcox, Wilcox. Zach, these past Zach, years with you have been, been such a blast. blast. You always make me laugh, and you're quite the gentleman. I'll miss you so much when you and I go to college. Hopefully, Hopefully this summer, summer we can fill it with amazing me. memories. You are amazing. Amanda Miller. She gave me digits. She gave me digits. Yes! What was that? Hello? Uh, hey, Amanda? It's, um, Zach Stevens from school. This thing, right? Alex. Dies. It's your inner wolf from Twilight. We've got work to do. <laughs> yeah, we do. I'm pretty sure inner George Harrison in all denim. <coughs> Vader, but after his mask comes out. That's really gross. Ah! <laughs> nah, we had a math oh. <laughs> test. No, I had a math. Oh, math <laughs> test! I knocked my mustache off! <laughs> A 
I'll get, I'll get, that's all, folks. <laughs> Just follow Jack. Ready? Action. Oh, oh, are you kidding me? Oh, that's a wrap. Get, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs>